We're here talking about the flu today. It's flu season, there's been lots of stuff going around the area, so we thought it was best to talk to a doctor. So we brought in Dr. Klepper from Maryland Primary Care Physicians. We've had you guys on before. We got to talk with uh, Dr. Lamphere and Dr. Walsh. Yes. So we're like, we need to get everyone in. Absolutely. So we welcomed you to come in and talk to us. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. So it's flu season, and yes. we were talking before we started uh, recording it. We feel like, or I do, that this is probably one of the worst seasons I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it seems like there's been a lot of cases out there. We've been uh, definitely uh, overwhelmed with flu cases in our office, mm -hmm. and a lot of the emergency rooms seem to be flooded with cases of flu this year. Um, uh, I don't know if it's the, the intensity of flu virus this year or uh, uh, folks missing out on vaccinations or what, but uh, it's definitely been um, uh, a busy year. Right. And it, I was saying, I feel like I can't even go on social media or news sites. You hear lots of horrific stories and things that are happening, not only locally, but around the world. So we want to talk to you about how can we identify the flu? How do we know when it's coming up? So what, what basically... What is the flu? Like, how do I how do I identify it? Yeah, so the flu, uh, influenza is a virus mm -hmm. um, that people can contract uh, typically through droplets. So, um, talking, coughing, sneezing, any like the typical actions that you would see uh, in everyday life is a way that it can be spread. Um, folks want to really look out for that sudden onset of high fevers, mm -hmm. um, muscle and body aches, headaches, cough. Um, it's not uh, typically subtle, more gradual, like you would see with a cough or a cold. It's really sort of intense, kind of hits you out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks feel like they got hit by a bus, literally. Right. And, um, and so that's what they're looking out for. You yeah. know? Um, and that should prompt them to uh, get in touch with their physician and um, possibly come in for an appointment. Right. So that, obviously that's the first step, contact your physician. Yes. Don't go to where? Don't go to the ER. <laughs> right. um, you know, the ER is very good uh, with emergency situations, but um, this is something that uh, if caught early, uh, we can certainly handle uh, with you in the office with supportive care and mm -hmm. tell you what to, you need to do, what you need to look out for. Uh, and it saves those resources in the emergency department for other emergency type cases. Right. Um, there's obviously certain situations, uh, certain folks with chronic conditions and, and where flu might uh, be more uh, dangerous to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are certain special cases where maybe they would get directed to the ER. But, right. but your first stop would be to, of course, call your primary care physician and, and, and come in and see us. Right, and do it as early as you can. As early as you can. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, caught uh, quickly, uh, there are uh, particular treatments that we can um, sometimes administer to help. Mm -hmm. Uh, help uh, with the intensity of the symptoms, help with the duration of the symptoms, uh, shorten them. Right. Um, but um, certainly calling us would be the first step. Right. And there, is there stuff that people at home can do to prevent the flu or prevent the spreading, prevent catching? Prevent spreading and catching are those kind of typical things that you would think of. But first and foremost is always get your flu vaccine. Every right. fall, whether you um, got it last year or not, each year is new and unique. So each year, get to your doctor, get to the pharmacy, uh, get to the health department, get your flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, yes, as far as spreading, um, just typical things that we would think of in everyday life. Uh, good hand washing, um, not being out in public if you're sick, obviously. Right. Uh, trying not to visit those or be around those who are sick. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and, and that's the basic things. Right. And stay away from work. Right. <laughs> you're, you're no hero if you come to work with the, with the flu. No one goes home. I was saying this. No one goes home and is like, oh, thank goodness that Ted came to work sick today. We really needed him. Absolutely. Yeah, stay Absolutely. home. It's okay. You know, these are one of those situations where I think your coworkers and your boss will thank you uh, mm -hmm. if you're staying home uh, when, you, when you're sick with the flu. Um, you know, like you said, nobody needs to be a hero. Yeah, there's no Stay award home. on the wall. There's no for that award one, on the right? wall for that. <laughs> exactly. You know, get home, get hydrated. Uh, you know, uh, rest up, and then get back when you're feeling better. Right. And we we touched on it, but I don't want to brush over the vaccine. Yeah. How important it is. And there's lots of uh, misconceptions about the vaccine. Like yeah. people think they're going to get sick or they, they might get the flu if they actually get it. Correct. Yeah. A lot of folks do feel like, um, you know, if I get the flu, that's exposing me, uh, the flu vaccine rather, um, that's exposing me to the flu. Uh, it gets me sick. And, mm -hmm. and the answer is that that's just totally untrue. Um, it, it is a not a live vaccine and therefore has no infectability. It cannot get you the flu. Right. Um, it does stimulate immune response. So some people do feel feverish for a day or maybe mm. some achiness at the, at the site where they got the injection. Right. Uh, but it is impossible to get the flu from the flu vaccine. So don't, be, don't use that as a, um, a reason not to get the flu right. vaccine. You're helping protect yourself. You're helping protect your family, yes. uh, the, your community, your coworkers. Mm -hmm. So very important. Right. And we do a flu vaccine special every year. And we tell you where you can get it. 
but a lot of people are afraid to maybe go to the doctor's office. They Correct. think they might get sick, you were saying? Yeah, if folks are worried, hey, you know, I don't want to come into the office because that's where everybody is sick and mm -hmm. I might uh, end up getting the flu or things like that, that's okay. You know, there's other places you can get the flu vaccine, uh, pharmacies, uh, the health department, like we mentioned, is mm -hmm. a place where you can get the flu vaccine. And they're free. And they're free. A lot of employers are now offering it free through work, so you mm -hmm. can get it at work. Just, let, you know, depending on where you work, take advantage of that if it's possible. So lots of different places you can go if you don't want to necessarily go to the doctor's office to get to your flu vaccine. Great. So we should be doing that at the beginning of the year, though. It be might be, it's never too late now. It's Correct. not too late, but we want to do it in the fall. Correct. It's yeah. not too late to get the flu vaccine. The, the flu season tends to extend between fall and winter time. So mm -hmm. we're still seeing a lot of cases here in February, March, and start to taper off in the summertime. But it's never too late. You can still get your flu vaccine. Uh, but ideally, you want to get it uh, early in the fall time. So mm -hmm. we usually start carrying it around uh, late, October, uh, late August into September. And yeah. that's when you want to get it. Prevention. Better than treatment. Yeah, uh, you, know, <laughs> uh, you know? So yeah, so be, be preventative. Do all that. Is there anything else that we can do to, to help combat flu season? Um, if you do see those um, uh, symptoms coming on you, again, just to repeat for y'all, um, sudden onset, fevers. Um, not everybody that gets the flu gets a fever, but if you do get high fevers, body aches, chills, headache, cough, um, uh, lots of fluids. Aggressive fluid hydration, mm -hmm. uh, alternating some Tylenol and Motrin to help with the fevers and the body aches. And then, again, if you are able to catch the symptoms early and we are able to test you, and confirm that you have flu or suspect it clinically that you have flu, there are medications sometimes we can give you to help shorten the course of that disease. So There you go. Perfect. And that's flu season. That's flu season. <laughs> so hopefully people are, are combating it and people are fighting it and you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're always getting your vaccine next year. And hopefully we get through the rest of the season with no problems. That's our hope. Yeah. Uh, you know, we want to keep everybody healthy and happy and uh, get to spring real soon. Yeah, let's do it. All right, well, thank you so much for stopping by. My pleasure. So we had Dr. Klepper come in. So I thank him so much for talking about the flu. Hopefully you're staying healthy and have a great rest of the winter and we'll look forward to spring.